بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله I will present this presentation on the penile breast lesions we have many posts before how to differentiate between two main well circumscribed masses are penile fibroadenoma and its differential diagnosis we will see and hamartoma uh, on ultrasound basis يعني I will uh, we'll talk today on ultrasound basis uh, so the benign breast lesions are diagnostic dilemma when to follow and when to biopsy and when to remove and this is very important uh, we have sonographic descriptors of breast masses regarding the size we have to take the size in three uh, dimensions uh, longitudinal and anteroposterior and transverse in order that these measurements can be reproducible on um, if, if any colleague other than you do the case he can also do the same measures we can also calculate the volume in order to see if the, this mass increase in size or not we have also to describe the shape of the mass is it rounded or oval or irregular on our talk today on the penine lesions, most penine lesions are rather over in shape. Uh, um, this is the shape of the lesion. This is an irregular lesion, malignant of course. And this is rather rounded lesion, but has other penine entities that we will say that the uh, interface with the adjacent tissue. Here we have the edge shadowing. And we have posterior enhancement, which is very characteristic to penine uh, lesions. Of course, not all penine, yani we have about 5% maybe malignant lesions still. So this is the shape. And then the margins, smooth margin or macrolobulated margins, uh, according to the, to the recent lexicon, th more than three macrolobulation Oh, it's not mac, يعني, more than three lobulation they are ma macro less than three macro lobulated uh, regular or speculated and poorly defined sometimes you cannot define the mass so it is poorly defined or ill defined this is regarding the margins the orientation of the mass uh, usually penile tumor are parallel to the skin the lung axis is more than the anteroposterior diameter but in malignant lesion being that they infiltrate deep so they are the anteroposterior diameter is more than the transverse diameter or nearly equal if it is uh, rather rounded this is the microlobulation that we see here this is microlobulation this is how to differentiate between microlobulated and macrolobulated then regarding the internal content the region we have to describe as if it is solid, cystic, or mixed. Ecogenicity anechoic, hypoechoic, or hyperechoic. If it is cystic with solid component, we can also say that there is a papillary projection. This is a case of intracystic papilloma. So we can describe the mass like this. Solid, cystic, or mixed. This is the internal contents and the ecogenicity of the mass. This is a cystic lesion, likely an abscess. Uh, in parenchymal interface, what is, mean, what is the meaning of parenchymal interface? Is the surrounding, this is the lesion, uh, and this is according to the physics criteria of ultrasound. When the lesion is of low attenuating value, uh, so the, the sound waves does not uh, the, the sound waves pass through the lesion and posterior enhancement will be the result and edge shadowing will be seen but on the contrary in markedly similar lesions like the carcinoma the carcinoma we, when we say in pathology that it is gritty in sensation when you cut so it doesn't pass the sound waves it makes like a stone it doesn't uh, pass the sound waves and so there is posterior shadowing of course, not all, not all penign masses have posterior enhancement and not all malignant masses have uh, posterior shadowing. 
Uh, also, um, one of the merits of ultrasound is the characterization of lesions. This is an intramammary node. Of course, you can see that it is an intramammary node. And also, by the uh, contents according to the fat. Usually, we describe the ecogenicity of the mass in relation to the breast fat. So here, this is a lipoma, and it is isoechoic to the breast fat. Sometimes it is hyperechoic, but usually it is isoechoic to the breast fat. And sometimes we cannot differentiate between lipoma and fibroadenoma on ultrasound basis if it is small and isoechoic to the breast fat. Except for the sensation, it is soft and we can correlate with the mammography uh, if, if we didn't uh, get a conclusion. Uh, also, don't miss in the sonographic descriptors the color-coded flow analysis of breast tumors. Um, the, the, the most important is the vascular morphology. What is the morphology? The pattern of enhance, the pattern of vessels. Here we have type 1, completely avascular. This can be seen in cysts and some cases of fibroadenoma and sometimes in hamartoma. Uh, and this is penine type. Uh, type, a, type 2A, only few scattered vessels seen within, mainly coming from the periphery or peripheral, and this is also penine uh, appearance, and this pattern usually we see in fibroadenome. In type 3, we have haphazard large vessels. Uh, in type 3B, the vessels show lack of arborization, which is with malignant circulation. So type 3 is with malignant circulation, but type 1 and type 2 is with benign circulation. Usually, you must put Doppler on any breast mass, especially if intraductal. We will have a, a presentation uh, more on the intraductal lesions, especially if intraductal, you must put Doppler. Um, it is not accepted to say that query in specific secretion query mass. It's not um, uh, good to, to write that because you didn't um, uh, will not know the, the lesion. Okay, this is uh, this is uh, yeah, totally benign or cystic, or this is uh, benign and this is malignant lesions. This is type three B. You see here the vascularity? This is malignant vascularity. This is a, a very large vessels with lack of arborization. So we must suspect, although the mass is smooth margin, well circumscribed, there is the orientation is parallel to the skin, but being highly vascular like that, we must put it suspicious by that's for. Uh, this is the ultrasound lexical from which is based the pyrads classification in ultrasound. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, I, I have many questions. Do we put pyrad on ultrasound? Yes, we can put pyrad on ultrasound, of course, because we have ultrasound lexicon. A breast composition homogeneous, fatty, or, or homogeneous fibrogranular, or heterogeneous. We have to comment heterogeneous. We say that it has mosaic appearance, and this usually uh, we used to describe in fibro, uh, fibroadenosis. The shape, as we say, over, rounded, or irregular, the margin circumscribed or not circumscribed, indistinct, angular, angulated margin, is against penality. Microlobulated, speculated. The orientation, parallel or not parallel. This is very important. The echo pattern, as we say, an echoic, hyperechoic, complex cystic solid, hypoechoic, isoechoic, or heterogeneous. The posterior uh, features, no features, or enhancement, or shadowing, or combined pattern, all that we have to comment on. Calcification is the calcification present inside the mass, and this we can detect by ultrasound. Or if it is outside the mass or antraductal, it is very difficult, sometimes it is very difficult to be detected on ultrasound, except in machines with micropure, and sometimes we could not de decide if this is good intraductal or not. This is very important because if, have, if you have calcification, we have just a post on calcification on mammography. If it is seen on ultrasound, it's better because we can take a biopsy. Associated features, 
features like architectural distortion, duct changes, skin changes, skin retraction, skin edema, vascularity, uh, the, the pattern that we have just said, absent, internal or ring vascularity, or with internal vascularity also. And then the elasticity, uh, using elastography. <coughs> in, uh, in the new uh, classification, they didn't put, um, uh, in this classification, they didn't put uh, is the, uh, the vascularity, but I think the vascularity is very more important than the elasticity. Uh, in special cases, simple cysts, clustered microcysts, complicated cysts, mass in or on the skin, foreign body including implants, intramammary lymph nodes, uh, AVM, Wander disease, all these special cases we didn't put in, the, um, in this description or in this lexicon. And the post-operative breast, it's something uh, uh, very uh, important to see the changes in the post-operative breast. Then we came to the hamartoma. The hamartomas are uncommon penile breast lesions composed of variable amounts of adipose, glandular, and fibrous tissue. They are usually asymptomatic and the degree of bulbability uh, is related to the ratio of fat to the fibroglandular component within the breast. But usually the hamartomas are superficial and so they can be felt, not here, the hamartoma is seen just under the skin. So they can be bulbable easily by the patient and they are mostly seen in women old, older than 35 years. Uh, very important if you suspect a hematoma and you didn't, uh, because there is many, many, many appearance of hematoma. If you suspect hematoma, you can do just one view mammography to be sure that it is hematoma, and so there is no need for follow up, and we put it by rats too. Because if you say hamartoma versus fibroadenoma, then you have to recall the patient again uh, after six months. Um, in mammography, the hamartoma is well circumscribed, the breast within a breast, we all know. Uh, but in ultrasound, because it resembles the normal breast tissue, the margins are often difficult to delineate. It may be seen as a well circumscribed solid lesion without any intralesional uh, microcalcifications. Uh, internal ecotexture is most often mixed with both hyperechoic and hypoechoic component. Lesions are soft and easy to compress. This is hematoma also, and this is also a hematoma with solid and cystic component, like the appearance of the mind. There is an ecogenic solid parts in the periphery. Uh, this one, very difficult, ill-defined margins, but it is breast within a breast, as we see in mammography. It is like breast within a breast. So what to do if you find an ill-defined mass like that? Just do one view mammography. It's a very large hamartoma. Okay, so this is hamartoma, and this is my report. There was left 12 o'clock hamartoma, fibroadenolipoma, pyrites 2, and follow stop. We have no to recall the patient. Uh, then came the typical fibroadenoma. This is the typical fibroadenoma. This is the typical fibroadenoma, and to me, I put it pirates too, because it's smooth outline. There is no vascularity on color doubler at all. Uh, we can measure its distance from the nipple because it's small in size. Uh, the, there is uh, no, there is no here posterior uh, enhancement, but there is no architectural distortion surrounding. Uh, the multiple, single or multiple. Multiplicity is with penility. This is multiple, multiple fibroadenomas. So multiplicity is with penility. More, more with penility. This is also fibroadenomatosis. Multiple fibroadenomas stu studied. The breast is studied by multiple fibroadenomas like that and seen also on mammography. So this is fibroadenomatosis. Uh, another entity is the giant fibroadenoma. Macrolobulated outline, isoechoic to the breast fat, um, posterior enhancement mild, but it is not, although it is very large size, it's not vascular on color doubler, and this is the giant fibroadenoma. 
Uh, the differential diagnosis of giant fiber adenoma is the cystosarcoma for lines I will see in, in uh, I will tell you later. We can differentiate, but sometimes we cannot. You see here the cystosarcoma for lines is globular in shape. There's internal septations like that, and it is more vascular on color doubler than uh, the giant fiber adenoma. Uh, this is female patient, 20, uh, 21 years old, and this is, the, is this lesion penile or suspicious? Uh, when we find like that, we get the ultrasound lexical one by one to see if this lesion uh, with penility or without. Although the lesion is very small, it is less than one centimeter, but it is globular in shape. Uh, it is vascular on color doubler. This is the color doubler. There is internal vascularity 3A and there is angulated border. So, from the lexicon, it lacks, if, if one of the criteria of penility is lacking, then we put it suspicious. And um, we put it suspicious here. This is the another lesion with high vascularity all that we put it suspicious. The first case, it, it proved it to be a fibroadeno fibroadenoma with epitheliosis and the atypical cells. And so it is excised because it is precancerous condition, although the patient was uh, young in age. Uh, and this case also, but this case, it was benign. In this case, it was benign, although it is irregular, but still, when we find irregularity like that, vascularity, then for biopsy. Pyrex for, for biopsy. But this proved to be hyalinized fibroadenoma. Uh, uh, the, the, this is the, um, uh, the report. Uh, I wrote it, mild suspicion, Pyrex 4. And then on histopathology, fibroadenoma with fibrocystic changes and focal florid epitheliosis. I think this is the first case of um, um, the 21 years old female. And this is the other case, um, revealed fibroadenoma with no malignancy and negative for malignancy and it caused de this degeneration uh, in the fibroadenoma. Lactational changes. Another case. It was very, um, uh, el vascularity is with fibroadenoma. But it has a strange appearance that this is a mass and this is a focal lesion inside the mass. And due to that, we put it by reds four, but it proved to be fibroadenoma also. Then came the fibroadenoma with pregnancy. This case is pregnant female. Many of us will write it malignant, but be sh be take care. Yeah, you, write it, uh, you write it suspicious because these changes common to occur with pregnancy. In pregnancy, fibroadenoma increases in size because of its sensitivity to hormonal level. The imaging findings of fibroadenoma is not very different during pregnancy, the same findings, but there is dilatation of the lactiferous ducts and the increase in the blood flow, and it became very similar to the complex fibroadenoma. When performing, and so, when performing fine needle aspiration for diagnosing bulbable fibroadenoma, you must consider the physiological changes of cells during pregnancy. A central biopsy is also appropriate to avoid the lactation, uh, in fistula, lactofistula, or infection. Another case, fibroadenoma increase in size, and but here they are highly vascular. Uh, this patient was followed up and it has the same appearance and after uh, uh, after pregnancy it returns to no, yani, to small size than that uh, because they are they were multiple they were multiple so what to biopsy and what to yeah, and so just we um, keep her for follow up and it was stationary throughout pregnancy this is another fibroadenoma well circumscribed 
<coughs> all the criteria of penality here okay and this is the doubler high vascularity then in the presence of high vascularity we have to consider a typical fibroadenoma this is another case it is more globular in shape and there is internal vascularity so this is another case of a typical fibroidium this case is mic microlobulated what to write? of course we will write it suspicious and take biopsy but it is a fibroidium multiplicity is very uh, yeah, is, is, uh, usually the fibroadenoma some of them uh, there is high line degeneration or something like that and when you do mammogram you will find it is of very low density due to degeneration present in the fibroadenoma but still we will put it for for biopsy this is mass this mass ill defined borders and shadowing posterior shadowing why to write how to write this case and there is no vascularity on color doctor Sometimes one view mammography is the solution. It is a calcified fibroadenoma, so it appears like that on ultrasound. <coughs> one view mammography can solve any mistress mass um, better than to write it malignant from the start. There is many variants of fibroadenoma. Variants of fibroadenoma are important to consider as their management differ slightly from typical fibroadenomas. A juvenile fibroadenoma is a vari variant. Uh, this case uh, from uh, Dr. Russell Moai that she has uh, put uh, on the group, and this is a case of giant fibroadenoma. Uh, apart from the patient age, larger size and characteristic rapid growth, these masses cannot be distinguished from typical fibroadenoma by imaging. Uh, at pathology, they are differentiated by increased stromal hypercellularity of the juvenile fibroadenoma. Uh, this, this is a the giant or juvenile fibroadenoma. Another case is the another variant is the complex fibroadenoma. This is what, uh, what we term complex fibroadenoma. While this cannot be completely distinguished from fibroadenoma on uh, imaging, but they are complex. What means that complex? That they, they have internal heterogeneity and cysts and sometimes functate echogenic fossae. Awareness of these features is important because their presence may motivate biopsy. Usually the complex fibroadenoma, if it is single, better to remove because there may be associated um, sclerosing adenosis, epithelial calcifications, apocrine metaplasia. So we better, especially if it is vascular. In this case, it is not vascular, but still uh, we can remove. And uh, of course, the patient has another, uh, in the last slide, another large mass. So we can remove both. <coughs> sarcoma phylloids. This is cystosarcoma phylloids, fibroadenoma and phylloids share many common imaging findings. It is difficult to distinguish them on all breast imaging models. But the presence of intralesional clefts and cystic spaces on ultrasound uh, may favor for phylloid tumor. Uh, in addition to phylloid tumor, we have also the tubular fibroadenoma or lactational adenoma in lactating females. Also, the tubular adenoma can occur in lactating females. Uh, they are non-calcified circumscribed solid mass similar to a fibroadenoma. In older patients, they can appear as suspicious irregular mass with microcalcification requiring core biopsy. But the lactating adenoma, when we find that appearance in a lactating female, you can give her time and follow because usually the lactating adenoma subsides and even may disappear after uh, stopping lactation. What are the treatment options? 
of the fibroadenoma. If we have a classic features of fibroadenoma, the lesion can be followed by imaging every six months for two years. If when you find the fibroadenoma stationary for two years, then you can write it totally benign without core biopsy. There is a growing body. Uh, there is a growing body of evidence showing that the periodic imaging is a safe management option for probable fibroadenomas. And many studies have done that according to the size of the lesion. If the size of the lesion increases more than 20% during the follow-up period, then biopsy should be performed. Uh, choosing a, to biopsy a probable fibroadenoma means uh, we, in, in practice and it is patient specific. Every patient differs from the other. The patient personal history, family history, age are taken into account uh, along with the imaging features that we have described when deciding a biopsy. If any imaging feature other than the classic features are present or the clinical presentation raises a concern for malignancy like rapid growth and new presentation after menopause, a biopsy should be recommended. Fibroadenomas with epithelial abnormalities found at core biopsy require surgical excision like the case that I have presented um, and it shows epitheliosis. So it must be excised and follow up occur. Uh, even the occurrence of malignancy or adjacent to a biopsy proven fibroadenoma is rare. Fibroadenomas without epithelial abnormality diagnosed by core biopsy need no specific follow up and can be left alone if asymptomatic. For symptomatic patients, Warranting definite treatment for fibroadenoma, options include surgical excision or minimally invasive techniques like ablative procedures and vacuum assisted core biopsy. Generally, women with fibroadenomas more than 3 cm are sent for surgical consultation. To me, if I have a patient more than 30 years with fibroadenoma more than 3 cm, excision. For excision, Sometimes I sent bef bef without biopsy. Excision and a frozen section will be um, uh, cut, to cut short. <coughs> so this is uh, a short hint on the fibroadenoma and the hamartoma and waiting for your interactions and additions. Thank you for listening. <coughs>